Hello guys, it's Ivan or Dreamframer again and this time we are talking about photo composition. I know, so complicated, but actually it's very easy to learn and once you acquire some knowledge about it, you're gonna be applying it like this. So let's not just talk about it, let's move to some examples. First of all, clean up the situation in the frame. The picture should tell the story and if you have any objects in the picture that are not adding to that story, then you don't really need these objects. You can avoid them by moving and taking a picture from a different angle or if uh, you can't do that and the background is just too busy, then try to use wider aperture to make that background blurry. And if you can't do even that, then try to do it in the post-processing. For example, these two pictures, the first one, uh, the hand with the cherries, I just removed these objects in the background during the post-processing because I didn't need them. And also this picture with the moth, uh, I made the background blurry in post-processing. So the moth becomes clearly the main subject of the picture. The next thing is the aspect ratio. Try to experiment with it. Turn your camera and take a vertical shot and then compare with the horizontal one and see what looks better for that scene. Or crop the picture later during the editing to see what looks nicer. You can also crop the picture in a way to simulate some of the standard aspect ratios like 4x3 or 16x9. Or you can just use free crop to uh, crop it in a way that looks nice to you. The only important thing, honestly, is just to train your eye to figure out quickly what works best for what kind of a scene. Number three, try to avoid the middle. Use rule of thirds, for example. The rule of thirds suggests that the picture will look nicer if we divide the frame with two vertical and two horizontal lines into three by three equal parts, and then we put the points of interest at those lines or the intersection of those lines. As an example, I prepared three photos for you. The first one, the moth again. As you can see, the moth is actually where two of these lines are crossing. And then this boat, the boat is again at one of those vertical lines and also at the place where vertical and horizontal line are crossing. And we have this picture of a landscape where I just excluded the vertical lines for simplification to show you how these mountains, or to be more precise, their ridges, are following these two horizontal lines that divide the picture in three parts. Of course, you should not force yourself to always use the rule of thirds. For example, if you have a subject that is uh, symmetrical or radial, you can put it in the center. Or let's say you took a picture of a landscape uh, with a lake and then the sky is reflecting in the water. You can put the horizon in the middle of the picture. You don't have to follow the rule of thirds and the picture will look nice. Leading lines. Let's see what that is about. We can use various objects in the picture to draw the attention of the eye to the main subject. For example, this road here leads our eye to the couple that's walking on the road. Or again, another picture of people walking on the road and we have the road that leads our eye to them. In both of these cases, converging lines also create the sense of perspective. However, if we want to introduce the movement or dynamics to the picture, uh, it often helps just to tilt your camera uh, a little bit and that will give you the strong sense of movement or dynamics in the picture. That's also called a Dutch tilt and you can do it even in post-processing. You can just rotate the picture a little bit like in this case and crop it differently and that will introduce a sense of movement in the picture. Viewpoint. The viewpoint can be really important when you are taking a picture. Even the most interesting subject can look boring if you take a picture of it from the eye level. The eye level is something that we see every day, so that's not really interesting to our brain. Also, the most boring subject can look really interesting if you take a picture of it from a different angle. So, go down to the ground, take a picture from down there. Take a picture from above, doesn't matter. You have to figure out how to make the final photo interesting to the viewer. Number six, space to move. Leave more space in the picture in the direction where the subject is moving or looking. 
When we see other people looking at something, we instinctively want to see what they see, or at least to check it out, to look in that direction. The same thing with the photo. If you have a person or an animal in the photo looking at something, you also want to see what they see, or at least to be able to look in that direction. So leave some space in the photo for that. The same thing with the moving subject. Here we have an example of a train and uh, I left some more space on the left side of the photo for the train to basically get into the photo, to move through the photo, or this dog here running out of water. I left some more space in front of the dog than behind the dog. Use bright colors and patterns to make the photo interesting. Our brain is drawn to bright colors and patterns, so use them in the photo. Try to exclude the objects that don't have the same pattern that you want to accentuate in the photo or don't have the same color palette. Or you can edit the color palette later when you are editing the photo, just like I did in this case. Balancing the elements. Place objects in the photo to create the visual balance. The visual balance is something that you will figure out with time and it's not something that is easily explainable. But for example, we have a picture of two parachutes over here and if you just imagine removing one of those parachutes then you would feel that something is missing in the picture. Or this picture where you basically have just one object but it's made of a parachute in the upper left corner and a person in the lower right corner. So they are making a balance. Of course you can break this rule like any other rule, but sometimes you will just feel that something is missing in a picture and that could be another object that will balance the picture in a way. Number nine, use natural frames. Many times you will find objects in the nature, in your surrounding that could make nice frames. I'm not talking just about taking pictures of real frames, like windows and doors and that stuff. I'm also talking about taking pictures of trees and grass and all the other stuff that can serve as some kind of a frame in the photo. If your main subject is placed in that frame, the photo can create all kinds of feelings like loneliness or coziness or anything else really. Number 10, break the rules. Guys, feel free to break the rules. They are here to make your photos look nicer in general. But if you have a story to tell, if you want to cause some emotion, you can break the rules. That's the whole point of photography, to tell the story, to cause the emotion. For example, if you have a person in the photo looking somewhere, you can put that person at the very edge of the photo and make him or her look outside of the photo. That will create some kind of drama or tension in the eyes of the viewer. It can even be frustrating sometimes. So be creative, be original. That's the most important thing. Be recognizable, uh, experiment. Maybe you're gonna invent something new. You never know. And just to mention one more time, press that like button, subscribe, or make a comment. That is something that really motivates me to create more of these videos. See you next time, bye.